at the outset i would actually like to congratulate you vikas for this excellent uh, meeting it's been three days of um, stevens johnson syndrome and we've been taking it in a very uh, scientific as well as a relaxed fashion if the two you know go hand in hand had enough time for a lot of discussions a lot of um, ideas no there's no uh, presentation so um, he wanted me to talk about the future of uh, stevens johnson syndrome uh, and the only thing that i always uh, can uh, remember is uh, jim saying that um, you know stevens johnson syndrome is the most challenging uh, uh, disease that any medical professional could see um, and if we do end up having a cure for it we probably have uh, treated any other difficult uh, situation so uh, given the fact that we're dealing with such a uh, challenging disease uh, i think in the last um, decade or more we have really come a very long uh, way with respect to understanding the disease a little more there have been, there's been a paradigm shift in the management and the various strategies that we have adopted in the treatment of uh, stevens johnson syndrome uh, when we looked at uh, our data um, between uh, 1990 to 2005 15 years versus the data between 2005 and 2015 10 years uh, so we realized that there's been a, such a big shift in terms of uh, mucous membrane grafting for lead margin keratinization that's really uh, been a big thing that has changed the um, scenario of sjs and its ocular sequelae because we had uh, such a huge percentage of patients who actually deteriorated in that 15 year period versus the um, number of patients who whom we were able to stabilize and maintain in the subsequent um, decade the okp was again another big thing which um, changed the uh, way in which we visually rehabilitated these um, patients and um, uh, we started doing the proce procedure in 2003. So this was one category of patients where uh, there are very limited options, but then when used appropriately, the idea is that the best way would be to prevent the disease. I think that's where Dr. Mayumi and her team, where they're working on the genetics and uh, the preventive aspects of uh, the reaction itself. But once you have SJS, uh, though we do so many OKPs, the idea is you try and prevent the patient from reaching a stage where he would require a keratoprosthesis at all, which is why all these various procedures that we keep speaking about, whether it be punctal cautery or whether it be mucous membrane grafting for the LMK, they have a very, very important role uh, to play because you don't want the patient to slip down and go to a stage where he would require a K-Pro because like you just saw in the case that Andrea presented, we don't have too many options even with K-Pros for an eye like that. Um, and um, where are we headed from here? Uh, I think we still need um, a lot of uh, research. We need to understand the basic sciences uh, that is uh, involved with the procedure. The epic manuscript by uh, Dr. Chodosh and the entire team that came out with the guidelines and the, the understanding of the pathogenesis of Stevens Johnson syndrome uh, in two parts. That was a huge collection Typical of Stephen Johnson. what we have learned in the past about this disease. And um, as far as the future is concerned, uh, the acute Stevens Johnson syndrome is again something that we need to understand what the pathogenesis actually is, though there are theories that explain. For excise and MMT was um, done uh, from the label. The uh, melts in the right eye, in the left eye, in the same sitting, I just put a BCL and waited for the lower lip mucosa. The Stevens Johnson syndrome till maybe a few years later, that would give us you an have a local or a focal area of uh, uh, take another mucosal uh, graft to the chronic to, to the final you try to, um, We are currently that is not very important. Lot Worst of, comes um, to worst if you uh, have to research, leave the area raw. With respect you can to leave it raw. A and its impact on uh, the chronic ocular sequelae of SJS. Uh, we are also trying to understand what the um, uh, inflammatory milieu in these after. eyes are. There's a lot of work that's going on in different parts of the world. Dr. Chodosh is right, no other questions. In, uh, uh, we can move on uh, to the next uh, session by. So I guess the future Dr. is Paris, we all need uh, to about come, infections come in SJS. Like we've done here and uh, share our experiences. Clinical aspect is one thing, yes. But uh, this is a disease where we really need uh, to focus more on um, 
understanding because I guess we need more targeted therapies. We know that the existing um, uh, therapies that we have are not absolutely adequate mm -hmm. since we don't still understand the molecular mechanisms of the disease. So it's a long At the road outset, ahead, I would like to thank Dr. Vikas for it. giving me this opportunity. I would just like to end by yeah. saying that... Um, you to know, be here. It has been great learning for last two days and, and um, it would continue uh, today's tomorrow as well. Experiment is um, a very structured yeah. way of understanding the disease and um, uh, formulating research strategies to understand the disease better. Dr. Vikas asked me to cover uh, infections uh, in Stevens Johnson syndrome tomorrow yes, yeah. from the disease. So, for prevention and cure tomorrow, uh, we need to kind of structure the way in which we see. Um, Cops, that you know, I mean, people like and me who uh, is together, I guess, sometime soon in the future, we'll have an answer to all these unanswered questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Gita. Yeah, Jim. So I want to uh, acknowledge uh, Gita and her team's contribution to the field of SJS. Um, you know, I've learned in many places, but none more so than at SN and from them. And you know, it's the dedication to the patients with these disorders that I personally am inspired by and allows me to want to keep going. And uh, I like to say 90% of what I know about these diseases has come through my interactions here with those of you who see so many patients and are so dedicated to the disease. So the other thing I'd like to say is, Agitha acknowledged, I think that these workshops serve because the more that we are collegial, and discuss among ourselves the further we can push this process of learning about how to take care of these patients. Uh, the difference between now and 10 years ago in this disease is beyond imagination. So I don't think that 10 years ago any of us would have said or imagined where we would be today in terms of having algorithms for treating these patients. I've said it to many of you and I've said it uh, to the group that when I was training, no one knew to do anything. It was artificial tears, pull their lashes, maybe put them in a bandaged lens so they wouldn't come to you complaining about their lashes and uh, you know, hope that they wouldn't come back because uh, you didn't know what to do. And now it's such a different ball game for us in terms of how to address these patients. The patients have hope, we have hope. Yes, it's very, very difficult, but anything worthwhile is hard. And so I just, uh, you know, I probably won't be around when the final solution comes in, but I, I think... I don't think I will be around too. But I, I think that the, uh, the movement that has come out from real collaboration, collegiality, uh, sharing generously one's expertise with others is really a model for how we should approach all diseases in medicine. And it's one that I personally think is done too rarely. Uh, at least in the U.S., there's more, uh, people are more closed and less generous and less sharing. They're worried about who's going to get credit for one thing versus another. And you don't take care of a disease like this by keeping your advances to yourself, okay? Because everything that we think is usually needs to be modified and uh, tempered. And that's why uh, those of us, we trust each other. We trust that if we criticize someone else's idea, they will take it constructively, that they won't say, oh, that person is criticizing me. We can say, I, I've said to Geetha, no, I don't agree with that idea and this is why. But she knows that I'm saying that with all respect and constructively and it's the same thing when I have an idea that she uh, flexed to me. And I think that should be the model of how we progress is, uh, uh, you know, in the U.S. for the NIH, they now know some of the NIH institutes, the National Institutes of Health, will not fund a grant that's not at least two centers, meaning they have very explicitly acknowledged that collaboration is key to advancements in science and medicine. And so that's why I'm so pleased to come and to be here. It's one of the reasons, to, you know, in addition to my friendships, because it's a collaborative effort to think and advance this disease. So we learned today about use of cartilage. I mean, we see so many things, and it doesn't mean that all these things are gonna be successful, but the fact that different people are trying and sharing, maybe we modify that, and maybe that modification is even more successful. So. I, I want to thank Etha, and I also, again, would thank Vikas for organizing this meeting. Did a fantastic job, and uh, thank you, everyone who stayed to the end. Um, it shows your dedication, so we appreciate that. Thanks, Jim, and. Uh, uh
as you said in 10 years we have come a long way so i'm sure in our own lifespan the financial solution will come so that that's that's it's 10 years you know 10 years you said 10 years ago we didn't have anything so maybe 10 years now from here